Hi there, Aaron Murphy here. Uh, I'm at Beamon in Miami. I'm with Ua Tigli, the CTO of Mineo. We're going to have, a, a, I think, a really good conversation. Looking forward to it. So, might as well just get started. Yep. Um, so, Mineo, I'm, I'm a bit of a fan. Um, Thanks. You know, we've been at Beamon, we've heard a lot of things. Uh, enhancements, new features with object storage that we've recently done and new things to come. But there's a lot more going on in the industry um, with object storage. I wondered what your thoughts were um, on that. That's right. Uh, thanks for having me on Vimon and, and in this interview, Aaron. So MinIO is a high performance object storage that's Amazon S3 compatible. And we are cloud native and quite popular in various use cases. We are an open source company and we have a lot of um, fans out in the industry as you're one of them, as I heard. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of downloads from a Docker perspective uh, for MinIO, we get about 1 million or so per day downloads and that shows the popularity in the open source world. And our partnership with Veeam goes back about four years or so. We've been the capacity tier for Veeam workloads and use cases for a long time, for the last three, four years. And with Veeam 12, we, Veeam opened the gateways for us to become the persistent storage for all purposes. So both for performance and capacity tier, you only need one object storage right now. And we, with Veeam 12, you can get only MinIO and Veeam for all your backup needs and recovery needs. So that's tremendously important for us because Object first is the way we look at the industry, especially in the cloud native world on all of the modern applications. And Veeam has, is one of the people out there, one of the companies out there who's really f forcing this object as first and primary storage. So both capacity tier and performance tier being accessible to object storage, especially MinIO, is it's tremendous because you just need only one storage and object storage becomes primary storage. And that's tremendously important for us and for the object storage industry out there. Great. And, and when Veeam 12 came out, I saw on your website, you guys were really out of the blocks quickly with some papers on performance. That's right. That was really exciting. So we're really close to the Veeam product teams. And we had the opportunity to do a benchmarking exercise before Veeam 12 was out. And what we have done is we set up an eight-node MinIO cluster, high-performance MinIO cluster using MVME technology and 100 gigabit network. And we had eight-node ESX vSphere cluster just trying to do backup and restores from the Veeam benchmark. And we work with a few folks on the Veeam side who has this uh, sorted out and has done this many times. Yeah. They helped us. We opened our labs to the Veeam product team and we did a benchmark and we published the results and you can go to our website and get details of this benchmarking. We were getting about 23 gigabytes with capital GB throughput from the Veeam perspective with compression to the backend MinIO cluster. We were getting about 12 gigabytes per second. That's tremendous amount considering theoretical overheads or with Ethernet and other things involved in a distributed environment, both from a, a MinIO and Veeam perspective. And the bottleneck was at the CPU side on the vSphere. We could only get that much. If we put, it, put more vSphere servers, MinIO side had more capacity to accept writes and backup. So it's so a completely Linear scaling then? Totally linear. MinIO itself is totally linear scale, scaling. And in that benchmark specifically, we found that this vSphere infrastructure was the bottleneck. And if we put, instead of setting up an eight node to eight node, if we did a 16 node to eight node MinIO cluster, we would be able to push that further. I mean, I just did the math there. I mean, that's, in, that's an incredible number actually. Like the 12 is 40 terabytes, so we're like maybe 85 that's right. terabytes in an hour. Yep from your side, right? So from the Veeam side, and then you're writing it down 40 terabytes an hour after compression. That's that's amazing number for <laughs> a large enterprise number. customer. And you get all of the other features. So MinIO, Veeam partnership started with the immutable storage that we have, warm capabilities that MinIO has. Veeam integrated right away to that. So our partnership started with that capacity tier and immutable storage 
workloads, and then it grew into different areas. Now, we are, if you look at those numbers and benchmarking we've done, this is not only for backup, but restore is also fast. So a lot of people, I started my career in backup world. I was doing backup administration, and a lot of people talk about backup performance or backup itself, but not many people talk about the restore performance. Yep. That's critical as well. Restore is critically important, but restore performance is also very important. And you can get both with MinIO and Veeam combination. And you only need two of these solutions, Veeam and, and MinIO for all your modern uh, backup and restore uh, needs. Right, we're nearly run. I've got time for one more question. I yep. think it's one you want to answer. At the Veeam Next presentation, we talked about Veeam adding the ability to backup from object storage, yeah. which is a big change. How do you feel about that? Yeah, no, there is a need, and it's right now we are at the border of people deploying large MinIO deployments, and they're asking me about backup. And when there is that need to back up the front end, basically buckets on MinIO to Veeam, that's a nice feature that should, it's the time for it because 10 years ago, or maybe even five years ago, buckets were not a concept that people were used to. Now everybody's deploying AWS S3 type buckets yeah. using MinIO and they're asking, how can I back that up? We like to have object storage as the final destination for the storage piece and have replication for ease of access. But some of the regulatory requirements, some of the government agencies, they have needs for backup and indexing of that uh, data. So for those use cases and workloads, we really want to make sure that all backup vendors are backing up buckets in the front end, as well as we are supporting them on the repositories and libraries in the back end. So I mean, I've, I've been following object storage for some time, and I've always been impressed by all the potential and the capabilities. Mm -hmm. I always thought backup was a great solution for it, but it was capable of so much more. I exactly. think you're saying it's 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 day. It's it's really coming. It's to coming solution. to the its primary storage. Even Veeam realized that capacity tier and now performance tier. When you combine both, it's primary storage and many other use cases from Hadoop use cases, which people are replacing HDFS and putting MinIO and S3 compatible storage to get cost savings as well as high performance, it's primary storage. Document applications, they are putting primary data on object storage nowadays. And a lot of people who are grown in S3 and came to a size that they want to bring some of their data on-prem for whatever reason, they're using object storage as primary storage. So many use cases are saying object storage or workloads are saying object storage is primary storage. Hence, it's time for the backup industry to look at buckets and object storage as a front end um, backup target as well. That's good news. I think that's going to do great wonders for the partnership. Um, yeah, pretty excited about it. So thanks for coming and having a chat. Quick chat. I could have talked a little bit longer, um, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, this was great. Thanks for having me, Aaron. <laughs>